Buy! Sell! Sell! Buy! Well, hello there, you salty little freaks. <clears throat> Aha! It's time for another edition of Kip You. We're going to learn about something fun today. We're going to learn about EGR, baby. Uh, sir? Question? Question for a friend. Boy, that's a good question. That young man asked the right questions because I coached him. Uh, EGR, let's talk about it. I'll put this down. So EGR stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation. And I could get very complicated with this topic or I could get very simple, but some interesting things to know about it, depending on who you ask. Um, EGR is actually kind of a miracle drug in a way. It was a big innovation, but let's talk. So when an engine is running, the piston goes down. Let's go to the big board, shall we? I mean, you pay nothing for a visual device. Magic screen. Come on, you Okay. All right. Can you see this? Whatever. Um, uh, do your thing. EGR, exhaust, exhaust gas recirculation. Um, what it is, is when an engine is running, when it's breathing, it does something very similar to what you do. It takes in oxygen and combines it with complex sugars in the form of petrochemicals and explosions happen and heat is created in motion and light and all kinds of fun things. The important thing to know here is that when the piston pulls down, it draws in a fresh air charge through the fuel system or a induction system for lack of a better term. Back in the distant past, when cars first started, it was literally a pipe with a hole in it that would just dribble. But if you squirt actively more fuel into an engine, it accelerates and then you can control its speed and so on. But long around the late 60s, uh, somewhat owing to uh, the, uh, the fire on the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, a magical moment that happened in 1970, even though it happened multiple times when the river caught fire, there was an EPA, and anyway, emissions became a thing, especially by the late 70s. So what EGR does, exhaust gas recirculation, is it does what you would expect it to do. It recirculates some exhaust back into the intake of your engine. Now, why does it do this? Well, there's a few reasons um, for it to do this, and they're all pretty smart. So one is that if you imagine a supercharger or a turbocharger, crams actively more air into the cylinder so that you can put in more fuel so that you can make more power. I mean, that's how these things work. Uh, you can think of that as artificial displacement, meaning it's a bigger cylinder with a bigger piston, and as far as the engine knows, it thinks it's bigger because it's drawing in more air. Thus, you can put more fuel, make more power. Well, you could have artificial small displacement by introducing an inert gas or replacing that intake charge with some inert gas in this case, exhaust gas. As far as the engine concerned, exhaust gas exists, but it's, it's, it's fairly benign. It doesn't have much oxygen in it, it doesn't burn, it doesn't contain much fuel, if any, and as long as you do it right, it doesn't contain particulates and soot and smoke and all this other fun stuff, which all of which would burn in the combustion chamber anyway, because the combustion is, as you would expect, hot and violent and, and basically vaporizes crap. So, some smart feller, which I don't know who, uh, figured out that if we re reintroduce some exhaust into the intake, we can artificially reduce the displacement of the engine, which gives you a smaller engine, which will give you better mileage. When you're on the highway at part throttle, the, the, in, the engine is using maybe 15 or 20% of its available power, of its maximum power. It's not like you run it flat out all the time. Uh, and so artificially reducing the displacement is a very handy thing to have, similar, or, opposite but similar to a supercharger which artificially increases it when you want it to or a turbo whatever so you get that idea but there are some other byproducts when you introduce hot exhaust gases into the mixture the engine runs hotter which is better for emissions and it's also uh, better for uh, power and volumetric efficiencies and some other facets um, a hot engine is a good thing um, which is why an engine that's running lean will make more power to run hotter to run the risk of melting pistons. This was a common plot device in the Fast and the Furious. But at any rate, you can control quite a few things about emissions and efficiency and some other stuff by being able to introduce some exhaust gas. So 
moving on into the future. In the 70s, late 70s mainly, uh, and then on, on through today, uh, quite a few systems were devised to deal with this introducing exhaust gases, because there, there's downsides as well. But usually it's just a spring and a valve, and the more the intake, the more vacuum there is, the more um, uh, exhaust gas it draws into the chamber, and that, that's how it works, it balances. But that's pretty flaky, I mean a spring is it's not super precise. So modern cars have more complicated systems, and diesels especially have super complicated systems. It's one of the reasons why the diesel ProMaster is a lemon, is because of uh, exhaust gas recirculation, and then they cool it, and it, there's a, it's a whole thing. Particulates and all this fun stuff. But EGR is not something to be afraid of. It's a, it's a, it's a plus to your engine. So here's where there's actual Pentastar content in here. You haven't just wasted a few minutes just listening to me blather in a lab coat. The Pentastar from 11 to 18 in um, all the vehicles, and starting in 18, there's a newer design. They call it the Pug or the Pentastar upgrade, but it's, it's filtered its way. And now if you buy a 2023 ProMaster, you get one that's a little bit different. But I'm talking about basically 22 and earlier back to 14 ProMasters and Pentastar engines, because that engine is in everything they make, um, is extremely clever and perhaps unique. I have never heard of another engine that does this, but it does not have an EGR valve. It does not have any mechanism to, to take in exhaust gas otherwise. What it does is it controls your cam timing and it controls how soon or late the exhaust valve closes, closes such that it can trap some exhaust gas in the cylinder. In other words, it's controllable EGR that requires no hardware, just software. The cams are controlled by oil pressure and the computer can put them within a degree or two of where it wants them to be and it can close them, I guess it would close them late? I don't know, maybe there's an animated thing of a piston going up and down, but regardless, what it can do is close them, I guess it would close them early. As the piston is coming up, the exhaust valve is open and the piston is pushing the exhaust out. If you were to close the valve soon, advanced, it would trap some exhaust in the cylinder. And that is how it does its EGR without an EGR valve. Quite clever. And as I say, I could be wrong about this, but I think that's many, men, almost all engines have, uh, have control, you know, they have computer control cams but, and variable valve timing. But I've never heard of one that, that does EGR without an EGR valve. It's a wonderful thing. As you know, as an engineering maxim, anything that's not on your engine is something that can't break. Any part that isn't there is one less part you need to worry about. Good engineering means very few parts. That is how the Pentastar in your ProMaster controls its EGR. And you don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything about it. It's one of the reasons why the engine, why we don't have problems with carbon, carbon in the intake. It happens a little bit, but it doesn't happen chronically like it does in the Ford or other engines. They don't carbon up. They don't, the, the EGR valve doesn't fail. There's no repair to make. There's nothing to do. It either works or it doesn't. And it's inherent in the engine. So that's exciting. I get very excited about these things. I don't know about you, but I sit alone at night reading Hot Rod magazines and getting excited. So um, in the newest engines in the Pentastar upgrade, there is an, ex an EGR cooler, which means actual exhaust gases get drawn from the exhaust pipe somewhere into a big box looking thing that sits on the side of the engine that's cool, I, believe, I assume with engine coolant. I don't really know. I haven't worked on any of those yet. They'll come to me in a few years once they get past the warranty period. We won't see any of the, of the pug engines until 2025 or whenever. Um, but... Uh, it's a big log that sits on the side of the manifold, and then I assume it meters it back into the intake somehow. And I can't say that that's problematic. I don't know, because I don't own one. But I can say that uh, it's, it's the ProMaster 14 to 22 is a sweet spot of simplicity that does not have an EGR system, and that's very exciting. I like to think we've learned something. I'd like to think you've learned something. And I'd like to thank you for watching. Well, all right, there you have it, my buttery little nipple clamps. ProMasters only, Barberton, Ohio, near Akron. Uh, open now and booking jobs and blah, blah, blah. You know all the details. Call me up. Email me as best, ProMastersOnly at gmail.com. I do not mind answering questions, and I love you deeply, and I just need uh, the tools with which to love you correctly. Carry on. Mwah!